Anyone who's heard of the Philippines has probably heard of Boracay. It is one of, if not the most popular tourist destinations in the country. Many islands may take the name White Beach, but it is Boracay's almost 4-kilometer white beach that has become the poster image of Philippine tourism for years now. Boracay's White Beach also made its mark when it was named the best island in the world by multiple travel publications like Condé Nast Traveler. But White Beach isn't the only thing Boracay can offer. There's so much to do in Boracay that attracts newcomers and has old visitors coming back like a yo-yo. Hey Beach Listers, it's Hannah from Philippine Beach List. In this video, we'll share with you the many different attractions and activities that await you on the beautiful island of Boracay. But before we begin, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notified when we have new videos. Now, some of these photos and videos are from our past travels. Once we revisit these destinations, follow-up videos will be in the works. As you may have noticed, this video will be in English. But if you want a Tagalog version of this, just visit the Poor Traveler right here. Alright, let's get back to the video. Of course, to get things rolling, first on our list is the stunning White Beach. Need we say more? You can't talk about Boracay without mentioning White Beach. It's the most popular attraction here for a reason. Its fine white sand is unmatched, and the water is crystal clear with a stunning blue hue. Just avoid going when it's algae season or the water will look green. The line of coconut trees along the beach also adds a more tropical vibe to the view. White Beach is the longest beach on the island, measuring around 4 kilometers. It is divided into three stations, Station 1, 2, and 3. It is lined with countless resorts, hotels, restaurants, bars, and shops. In Station 1, you will find the iconic Willie's Rock or Grotto that's often featured in photos and postcards. There are also other activities that you can do here like stand-up paddling and the newest craze on the island, the Crystal Kayak. You've probably seen photos of this online. With the amount of pictures that go viral, a lot of people get influenced to also try and have their own photo shoot while on a transparent kayak. And because the water in Boracay is also crystal clear, these photos always turn out amazing. Don't worry if you're shy or a bit awkward. Trust that your boatman slash photographer will bring out your best angles. They're so used to taking photos that they'll even tell you what poses would look good. So just strike as many poses as you like for the gram. You'll surely get one photo or more than likely a whole album of it to post on social media once you get back home. If you're traveling with your significant other, you can also rent a kayak together and take couple photos. In this case, you can either paddle the kayak on your own or still have a boatman slash photographer with you. And here's a tip. Go on the crystal kayak when the sun is out so the color of the water looks brighter and you won't need to photoshop it. Choose your best beach outfit and bring sunglasses too. You can try the crystal kayak at White Beach, Puka Beach, and even at other resorts with their own coves. Each session costs around 250 pesos per person and it lasts around 15 to 20 minutes. Island hopping in Boracay is a whole day affair. From our team's experience, tours usually start around 8 a.m. and finish past 4 p.m. Usually, a tour costs around 900 pesos to 1,300 pesos per person, inclusive of buffet, lunch, and use of mask. But entrance fees for some of the stops are not yet included. There are two jump-off points, Station 1 near Astoria and Station 3. You'll have no trouble booking as there are a lot of tour peddlers along the beach. Or you can also book in advance via Klook. We'll put the link in the description box and pinned comment to make it easier for you. You can also use our code PHBEACH for discounts. Wherever you choose to book your tour, the stops will be the same and you'll be grouped with other tourists. The only thing that usually changes is the lunch stop. 
As for the stops of the tour, you'll usually find the next few items on this list on the itinerary. Glazing the northern edge of Boracay, Puka Beach used to be really quiet. Although it's still relatively quiet compared to White Beach, there are more people here now compared to how it was in the past because aside from island hopping, this is also accessible by tricycle. The sand here is mixed. There are parts of the beach with fine sand, but there are also parts that are strewn with shells, which may be the reason why it's called puka, which are the remnants of the puka or puka puka snail. The beach here is also wide, but it slopes dramatically and the waves are bigger, so be extra careful if you plan to swim here. There are also crystal kayaks here, but if you're island hopping, I'm assuming your time will be limited. So you might as well just book a crystal kayak at White Beach. Just savor the beach here. There are also multiple photo spots, but there could be long lines during peak hours. Crystal Cove, also known as Laurel Island or Tiguatian Island, is a two-hectare resort best known for its lookout caves and rock formations that make for good photo spots. Honestly, that's mostly what people do here. Take photos. Do note that there's a separate 300 peso entrance fee here if you want to enter. It's not yet included in the island hopping tour fee. However, you have the option whether you want to go in or not. You can choose to stay on the beach and chill or swim. And if you're hungry or thirsty, they also sell coconut juice here for around 100 pesos and banana queue for around 35 pesos. Every island hopping tour includes a stop at a snorkeling site. We were brought to this spot near Balinghai Beach. The boat will just moor and you have the choice to snorkel and see the corals and fishes or just stay in the boat. If you do choose to go snorkeling, there's an additional fee of around 100 pesos. Make sure to wear a life jacket because the waves can be strong which makes it harder to swim. It's better to be safe and secure. After snorkeling, it's time for lunch. Different operators have different lunch spots, but it's usually a buffet. One of the possible lunch stops is Xingli Picnican Restaurant, located near Tabon Port on the mainland. They serve typical island fare, which is mostly grilled and fried food. They also have a kawa bathtub for photo sessions. The kawa baths first became popular in Antique. This island is best known for its cliff jumping platforms. However, not all tourists make a stop here. If you do make a stop here, there's a 250 peso entrance fee. During our team's last visit, the tour didn't stop here. So if you're interested in visiting Magic Island and jumping off its cliff, it's best to tell your tour operator beforehand. According to our teammates on a previous trip years ago, they made a stop here and were brought to a snorkeling site near Crocodile Island. If you've been island hopping in Boracay recently and had a different itinerary than what I mentioned in this video, do leave a comment below. Although we believe that each place has its own charm and comparisons aren't really necessary, we still want to manage your expectations for this island hopping tour. Honestly, if you've gone island hopping in other Philippine destinations like Cebu, Palawan, Bohol, or Siargao, Boracay island hopping can be underwhelming. The attractions here are not as diverse. We consider Puka Beach the highlight of the tour. If you want to visit that and skip island hopping, you can also go there on your own. That way, you can spend more time compared to the 45 minutes or an hour that you get when you're island hopping. You can also go to Puka Beach as part of the land tour or e-trike tour. Yes, you can also explore Boracay by land. You can charter a tricycle to do this, which will cost 500 pesos per hour. That's the approved tariff of the government and that price is per tricycle. Each e-trike can fit a maximum of 4 passengers. For e-trike tours, you can just hire a tricycle along the road. E-trike tours do not have a fixed itinerary, so you can decide which attractions you want to visit. There's a list of possible stops, but if you want to skip one or stay longer in a specific stop, you can do so. After all, e-trike tours charge by the hour. The keyhole isn't a new attraction. If you've been to Boracay before, you've probably noticed this natural arch from afar while you're parasailing or doing other water sports. But now, this attention-grabbing rock formation was made more accessible. However, to protect it and keep guests protected as well, there are parts of the keyhole that are off-limits. Management has designated areas where you can take pictures or admire the view. 
This is located at the far end of Lapus Lapus Beach. This could be one of the stops for the e-trike tour, but if you just want to see the keyhole, the e-trike fare going here from Station 2 is probably around 250 to 300 pesos. Here are other stops that can also be a part of the e-trike tour. You can visit the Niwid Beach, just north of White Beach, Ilig Iligan Beach, located at the northeastern corner of the island. You can also add Bulabog Beach to your e-trike tour, but if you're coming from Station 2, you can also walk to get here. This occupies the eastern coast of Boracay. It's not as popular as White Beach, which is on the western coast because the quality of the sand here is different and there's a lot of seagrass. However, this beach is often visited too because of the scenic coconut trees that line the beach. This bent tree has even become a popular photo spot for tourists. Bulabog Beach also serves as the jump-off point for most water sports. That's another thing that you will never find lacking in Boracay, water sports. Let's start with what's probably the most extreme, parasailing. Here, you'll be wearing a parachute and the boat will pull you up until you slowly go up in the air. It's a bit intimidating at first, but it's more chill once you're up there. You'll get a bird's eye view of the island like you're flying a drone, but in this case, you are the drone. If you're traveling with your friends or family and you're looking for a thrilling activity, the UFO or banana boat is for you. You won't be able to stop yourself from screaming with adrenaline. While wearing an underwater helmet, you can walk on the sea floor. If you don't have an underwater camera and you want to document your experience, you can also rent one. Along White Beach, Parau sailing is a popular activity. Parau is an outrigger boat with two triangular sails and this has become an icon in Boracay, especially the blue ones. It's relaxing to watch them from afar, but you can also hop on one. It's cheaper if you do this with a group. Here are the rates per person. It's best to do it just in time for the sunset, although it is a bit more expensive. Many of the kitesurfing operators are located in Bolabog Beach. It's nice to watch the kitesurfers as you land on the beach, but you can also try it for yourself if you're interested. Kitesurfing schools offer introductory courses for around 4,800 pesos. All the action in Boracay can be traced to one mall. D Mall. Located in Station 2, this is where you'll find the highest concentration of establishments in Boracay, especially restaurants and stores. When you walk around D Mall, you'll see so many things that you'd want to try. There's Halo Mango, Ice Flakes, and a whole lot of meals because many popular restaurants on the island are located here. If you forgot to pack something, there's also a grocery where you can buy toiletries or snacks. If you need extra clothes or flip-flops, there are also shops here where you can buy them. There are a lot of things you can find in D-Mall, so if you're unsure where to eat or where you can get something, head to D-Mall and you might just find it there. Boracay sunsets along White Beach are incomparable. You can savor it while sitting along the shore, or you can look for a cafe or bar with a view and grab a drink while waiting for the golden hour. If you're staying at a resort with a pool on the upper floor, you can also take advantage of its location. You can also go swimming with the sunset as your backdrop. However, keep in mind that night swimming is not allowed, so you'll have to get out of the water when it gets dark. You can check the specific time on the advisory board displayed along White Beach. One of the things that makes Boracay Boracay is the lively nightlife that you can't find in other destinations in the Philippines. Although the scene isn't as lively compared to before the Boracay closure in 2018, nightlife on the island still exists. If you want to drink or dance or both, there are still bars and clubs along White Beach. There are also ones located inland like two brown boys that offer their signature cocktails. You can also try Los Indios Bravos which is known for their craft beer. There are so many great food places in Boracay. It honestly deserves its own video. 
May it be the more upscale spots or grub hubs that are easy on the budget, you really won't go hungry in Boracay. In our next video, we'll be talking about these food places you can try on your Boracay trip. If you're looking forward to that and more beach recommendations and other Philippine destinations worth adding to your bucket list, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get notified when we have new videos. And that's it for this video about things to do in Boracay. If you have recommendations or questions, leave a comment below. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We are at Philippine Beach List on all those platforms. You can also check out our blog, philippinebeaches.org. The Philippines has so many islands, it's honestly going to take a lifetime to visit each one. So that just means we better get counting. Again, this is Hannah. Join me again next time as we check another destination off our Philippine beach list. Bye!